What part of keeping quiet is confusing for you? What? I'm using headphones. No one can hear me. Any sound we make is heard. We cannot afford to be discovered. When I allowed you to accompany me, it was with the understanding that you knew what we were up against. Now lose the music, or head back to Colorado. He's close by. Be on your guard. One mistake and he'll be down on us before we can even react. It's almost dark. Why don't we do this in the daytime? Because it doesn't work that way. He can change whenever he wants to. I thought I saw movement. Seth? Seth!
Hey, we're your neighbors. We just came to welcome you to the neighborhood. Anyway, we're having a neighborhood pancake breakfast at the local park this morning to welcome in the summer, and we'd like to invite you to come along. I'm far too busy. I'm sorry. <laughs> too busy? For what? Breakfast? I mean, he's got to eat, right? No, 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 no. You know what it is. It's, oh, I'm sorry. I'm too busy for you folks in the new neighborhood. Uh, I don't think I want to associate with your little breakfast in the neighborhood. That's what it is, isn't it? Hmm? Shh, Arnie, he's going to hear you. That was my point. <laughs> <laughs> Bye -bye. Well, let's get back to the house. We're going to stop yep. Absolutely. It's going to be a great breakfast, you know. Man, you just never know who might move into your neighborhood. Yeah, like a Texas Chainsaw murderer. <laughs> be nice. Maybe we just caught him in the middle or something. <laughs> yeah, like burying the latest body in the backyard. Hi, <laughs> Okay, why don't you guys get the stuff out of the backyard and us gals will get the stuff here in the garage. Brilliant! As always. Exactly. Did you give up the last night? Not really. Did you hear that dog barking all night? Yeah, that dog kept me up all night last night. Same here, but not Arnie. He'd sleep through anything. He didn't even miss a beat. Yeah, same here. You know, a train could come through our neighborhood and Jim would just sleep right through it. Did you hear that big dog barking last night? You know, Marissa was talking about that this morning, but I didn't hear anything. That's so you. I don't know, man. It started about 2 o'clock in the morning. Woke me right up. But it didn't sound like a dog. At least, not one that I'm used to being around. So, like, what then? Psycho Robo Dog from hell? <laughs> no, no, nothing goofy like that. Just like a lot bigger than a regular dog, like a train-sized dog or something. Ah, so it was Cujo then. Cujo. Good book, crappy film. Seriously, Arnie, how many movies are you actually in? Well, uh, so far, uh, two. Were these movies I've actually heard of? <clears throat> are you kidding me? The first movie was that masterpiece of suspense, Attack of the Blood Creatures from Beyond Venus. Now, I play tortured astronaut. Biff Comstock, whose death at the beginning of the movie set up the entire plot. Now, the second movie was that terrorist thriller, Biker Gangs, from the 26th century. I played the third terrorist in that biker gang, bent on world domination. Didn't we see that on Late Night TV, like, six months ago? Yeah, we did. Hey, Arnie, don't you die before the first commercial? Well... Yeah, but uh, it was my death that actually set up the entire plot and got it rolling. You gotta make some sacrifices in that sometimes. Crappymovies.com has ranked one of the top ten worst movies of all time. It should be number three right behind Mono's Hands of Fate and every movie star John the Pompous Ass Agar. Have a hard time. <laughs> Cody Ardroni, how you doing? Hey, it's James Mace. That's right. Have a seat, Jim. All right, man. So how long are you home for? Just a couple of months. What is it you're studying again? I'm at the University of Pennsylvania getting my Ph.D. in uh, mythology and folklore. I have about a year left. What will you do with that? Well, I'll probably teach mostly, but I'm also interested in some of the archaeological things we can do with it. A lot of the, the myths have their basis in truth. What do you mean? Well, in the 1870s, the Palace of Knossos and the city of Troy were both discovered by some Europeans based on their respective myths. So I'd like to kind of get into some of that, see if we can't find some other true myths out there. Sort of an Indiana Jones thing? <laughs> yeah, well, kind of. I mean, I do like whips, not in a dirty way, of course, and I, I don't like snakes much.
wanted to thank you all for coming today. I appreciate you all showing up. Um, for you newer folks, we do this every year. It's just our way of saying goodbye to the cold and hello to the warm. Because I don't know about you guys, but I'm tired of the cold. Um, storm's moving in. Uh, it's supposed to be here this afternoon. So uh, stay as long as you like. Have a good time. And uh, that's pretty much it. Excellent host. Hey, at least we got it all cleaned up before the storm arrived. Wow, it's really coming down out there. That'll be good for the flowers, though. True, but I'm glad I'm not out in it. Why do people always have to cut across our lawn just because we live on the corner? Because people are just really lazy. <coughs> wow! That sounds like a really big dog. A really big dog? Come on, let's just go to bed. We'll get some sleep. Hey Kelly, I was wondering if you were going to stop by while you're home. Come on in. Hey, good to see you. What are you working on? I'm writing an article on the history of flat track motorcycle racing for Motorcycle Racing Magazine. I just got this footage. Check it out. All right, it's 1974. This is Kenny Roberts. He had won his first of two national championships in 1973. This is the first time Kenny Roberts was ever seen by anybody running the number one plate at the beginning of 1974 at Ascot Park in Gardena, California. It was awesome. All right, now it's uh, 1977. We're at Ascot Park again for the TT National event. This, this is different from most flat track races, which run on ovals. That's uh, Corky Keener coming at us. Um, the TT race actually runs on a kind of road course with a jump, and the first guy out on the racetrack is number 44, Alex Jorgensen. There's the jump. It runs on the, it runs on the inside of the main straight. Pretty big jump, and a uh, pretty famous jump, actually. Now we're going to see number 11. This is Steve Eklund. And Steve Eklund, actually, a few years after this, would win the national championship on a privateer bike. Hard to do. But then a few years after that, he was involved in a really nasty accident and was put in a coma. Uh, he stayed in that coma for about a year, he's never really recovered from it, and then passed away about a year later. So it's really cool. You know, I'm, I'm watching this. There's, Ken, or there's Steve Eklund on the racetrack once again. Very awesome. Nice to see Steve again. Going fast at Ascot. Now, this was my guy in the 70s, man. Number 98, John Haley. I was a huge fan of this guy. I followed him from being a novice all the way to an expert. I was there at the Corriganville Movie Ranch outside of Simi Valley in 1975 when he showed up on a 500cc bike and won the thing. There he is, my guy, John Haley, on the racetrack in 1977. Very cool. Now, this is the infill. comes off of turn two. You have this weird little S road course thing that leads to that big jump. And you're about to see Kenny Roberts, the high-flying Kenny Roberts. Holy cow. Taking the jump. He's, this is after he'd won his two championships. He's now number two. 
And uh, he's about to make a pass on a guy in a place where you can't pass. But that's Kenny Roberts. He can do anything he wants. Hey, uh, this is really cool, but can I ask you a question? Yeah, shoot. Did you guys hear anything kind of weird last night? Weird? Like, what kind of weird? I don't know, just like something kind of out of the ordinary, maybe? Not just the storm last night. Oh, there's a really big-ass dog. Yeah, that's kind of what I meant. It didn't really sound like a dog, did it? Well, not like my two little things. Okay, good. So it wasn't just me. I asked Mom and Dad, but they were dead asleep and didn't hear anything. So you got something against really big dogs? Big dogs, no, but I'm not sure it was a dog. It sounded much bigger, like maybe a wolf, perhaps? <laughs> no wolves around here, man. Some big cats, though. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to make sure somebody else heard something. Is something wrong, Kelly? No, no, nothing's wrong. Just uh, thinking about some things. I'll probably take off. I'll talk to you later on, man. All right, have a good one. If you have a second, Mr. Scrim. Cow, honey, are you okay? Honey, are you all right? Hello? Honey? Honey, what are you doing?
Did your article come together okay? Pretty much, yeah. I spent far too much time poring over old racing footage, though. You must have enjoyed that. As a matter of fact, yes, I did. But enough about that. How was your day? Yeah, it was a pretty productive day. I got a lot of my painting done on the picture, but I'm pretty beat. Then why don't we just go over today? Sounds like a great idea. Good night, babe. Good night, babe. Pleasant dreams. When you get done with the police, get that other gun. If you broke it into my house, you better be bulletproof. I'm sorry, I wasn't here sooner. like he had some sort of feeling within himself. Well, Arnie and I just took care of that about six months ago. We wanted everything to go to Kelly instead of some consortium. That's really smart. Hey, let's go get some lunch. I'll take you to Johnny Carino's. Huh? Lunch? I don't think so. I'm not really hungry. Oh, come on, Jules. We need to get away for a little while. Let's go. Yeah, maybe you're right. Uh, let's get out of here.
Good morning, son. Have a good night? Well, sort of. I was researching a guy named Angus Scrim. You ever heard of him? Nope. But since you're majoring in mythology, I'm thinking it has something to do with the supernatural. Yes, he does. He's on a number of supernatural sites. He's kind of a loner. There's not a whole lot of stuff on him. It's just what various police departments have in their records. Oh, criminal type, huh? Actually, he was a cop. He was a detective investigating a murder in 1976. I guess a lot of people died, and maybe a few of his friends. Then he just kind of quit, and not much is known of him since. Sounds mysterious. Is he still alive? Well, he was six months ago. That's the last time I could find anything on him. Been waiting long? How are you holding up? Probably about as well as you. And you think maybe we might have something going on in the neighborhood? Maybe serial killer? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. I've been looking on the internet for all the information I can find, and there's just not that much, which is really strange. What, did, what does it all mean? I, I don't really know, but I think I might know somebody who does. Who, the police? They, they aren't telling me anything, and they only keep saying that once they have something solid or concrete, they'll let me know. No, I wasn't thinking the police. I was just thinking that, that guy that moved in across from you. Have you ever met him? No. Um, we've tried, you know, inviting him to our annual barbecue, but he just blew us off. Yeah, I remember that. It pissed my dad off pretty bad. I'm pretty sure I might know who he is. I've been looking on the Internet, and his name is mentioned in a lot of uh, mythology, supernatural-type websites. Looks like he's involved in some ongoing investigations and murders. Why would he be listed on a supernatural website, though? That's the thing. I guess the murders are somehow connected to the supernatural, and after what I saw the other night, my parents were ripped apart. What did you see? First, did you see anything in your house the night Jim died? Nah, Jimmy kept me upstairs, and um, when I came downstairs, I heard a voice, and oh my gosh, now I remember. Um, it was the guy from across the street. Um, he apologized that he showed up late, but he still couldn't save Jim. Well, his name is Angus Scrim. I don't know if he was in my house or not, I was just getting home at the time, but I saw the aftermath. My parents were torn, they weren't cut, they were, they were ripped apart, and they may have been bitten, but there was, there was something else, I thought I saw something, something bulky and hairy leaving out the back door. I just saw it for a second. It? What do you think it is? I'm not really sure, but I don't think it was a man. Can I ask you something, Jules? Sure, what? You don't have to answer, but Jim's body. Were there any bite marks on it? Yeah, now that you mention it, there were uh, some bite marks on his throat. The uh, police kind of told me it was some sort of gang initiation thing. He wasn't killed by a gang initiation. If it is what I think it is, this thing shouldn't even exist. It's big, fast, and bloodthirsty. I, I don't know what to call it. I'll call it a wolf man for a lack of a better word, but it's ferocious, and it killed my parents in just a few seconds. Man, what are we going to do? I have a couple ideas, starting with Mr. Scrim. You be careful. You might get into something a little over your head. What choice do we have? People are dying, and the police are looking in the wrong place. They're looking for an angry sociopath or some gangs. Yeah, but what about you? Are you going to be okay? I'll be just fine. I'm the heir to the Cartoni tripod fortune. I don't have to work again. I guess school can wait till we figure this thing out. I need to go talk to Mr. Scrim after I do some more research. And just be really careful, okay? I will.
So let's stop in the park for a little bit. Okay, well, why do they call this Lincoln Park? Because Lincoln Park is a band. Yeah. Duh. So I'm not going to Lincoln on Saturday. It's going to be pretty bad now. Yeah. It is going to be pretty fun. I'm pretty stressed about it. I don't know, totally. So, what kind of rides do you want to go on? You want to go on Spider or Wicked? Or... I know, it's going to be way fun. Yeah, they are. Oh, we should come go scrubbing here real quick. I'm kind of tired, are you? Sounds good, yeah. Come here, Cash. Come here, Chibbets. Come here, baby. So, should we leave about 8 o'clock? Yeah, that sounds good. Not too early. Sounds good. Do you even think it's safe to be out here at this time of night? Dude, I don't even know. It's kind of creepy out here, though. I know, I heard something on the news. Really? Yes. I think people have been getting killed or something. Did you hear something? Yeah, I did. What was that? Angus Scrim! I know who you are! I know you're in there! Open up! Angus, I know who you are and what you hunt! My parents are dead! Open up! I'm sorry about your parents, kid. Sorry? That's it? My parents are dead! Now open up! I heard you, kid. They're dead. We can't bring them back. Now you should get out of here before you wind up the same. Or worse. I'm not going anywhere. I'm here to help you. How do you propose to do that? I know all about you, Angus Grimm. Your next cop from Southern California. You came across a werewolf over 30 years ago that killed all of your friends. Now I'm here to help you kill it. How do you know all that? Why don't you let me in and we'll talk about it. Have a seat. Now, who are you? My name is Kelly Cartoni. I'm a PhD student at Penn. I'm studying mythology and folklore. I've known about you for a long time. And I know what you hunt. You hunt a shapeshifter, probably a werewolf. And I want to help you kill it. And what makes you think you can help me? Or that I want your help? I've been studying these creatures for years. I know as much about them as you do. I know how to kill them, and I'm ready to do it. You know all about these creatures. All right, college boy, tell me about them. Most shapeshifters, especially werewolves, are nocturnal. They only come out at night. Some can change back to human form and some can't. Those that can't usually have no idea what they are. They're also really smart. 
they're beasts, but they're not mindless. Pretty good, kid. However, this werewolf can change whenever he wants to, day or night. They're very, very smart, but unpredictable. They avoid danger, or they may attack whenever it suits them. What else have you got, kid? They aren't held in sway by the moon. They first change at the full moon, and they're stronger at the full moon, but it doesn't dictate when they'll change, attack, or feed. True. You're doing pretty good so far. So, how do you kill them? Shapeshifters are reactive to silver. It puts them into anaphylactic shock. It incapacitates them to a degree. If we introduce enough, it'll kill them. But we can also kill them by severing their spine or their head. And you have experience in this? No. No, I don't. Then, go home. I have too much to do without worrying about keeping you alive. You don't have to worry about me, Angus. I can take care of myself. Relax, college boy. You are a nerdy bookworm. Probably a self-declared nerd. Other than rattling off facts from textbooks, how are you going to help me? I don't need another dead tag-along. I am a nerdy bookworm, Angus, but who else is going to help you? How long have you been on this thing for? 30 years now? No one else is going to help you except me. I understand computers, weapons, tactics, movements, and I'm good with knives, too. Weapons and tactics? Have you even shot a gun? Yes, I have. Well, describe these tactics and movements. PlayStation! Excuse me? You heard me. PlayStation. Ghost Recon, Rainbow Six, SOCOM Navy SEALs. I played all of them. What are you talking about? Video games? You are a nerd, are you? Playing video games does not mean you are trained in weapons and tactics. Well, I admit, I, I learned all this in the theoretical, but the practical application is still the exact same. You know, using big words like that doesn't make it any less stupid. Now, you said you were good with knives. Did you learn that from a video game? No, I'm good with knives. I'm good. I'm good. All right, kid. Let me make this perfectly clear. I'm going to allow you to assist me. This is my kill. I'm the sniper. You're my spotter. Or my bait. Depending on how much you take me off. And right now I'm leaning towards bait. You will do what I say, when I say. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. Do you have any idea what you're getting yourself into? Are you kidding? I was born ready. Born ready? Really? Well, at least you'll probably die quickly. We're hunting tonight. Go get whatever you need. Come back here. You can rest until night. You can use a spare room. You know, I thought you'd be a lot taller. What? Nothing. I just thought you'd be a tall man. What are you doing, college boy? Well, old boy, I'm trying to type up a grid of all of our friends' movements. He seems to be doing a lot of killing in the same basic area. If we can lock those in, we might be able to find out where he lives. Do you have your notes with you? You can do that on the computer? <laughs> you really are computer literate, aren't you? I've never been in any place long enough to have time to sit down and figure it out. But all the names and addresses are in that book. This book's really detailed. By the way, I love the room. The flowers really bring out your eyes. It's a rental. I need to ask you a question, Angus. I'd like you to answer it. Will you? What's your question? Angus? How did you get started in all this? Okay. 
It was 1976 in Southern California, back when I was young and on the police force investigating homicides. I was on the fast track to the big time. Then a murder investigation turned up that was outside the norm. You know, bodies being viciously bitten and nothing getting up. At first, we were baffled by the violence, but then quickly discovered we had something evil on our hands that we figured must be like Manson. We soon discovered we had a real monster on our hands. We tracked him to a vacant area, and there was a battle that cost the lives of a lot of my friends. In the end, it came down to just him and me. We fought, and he went over a cliff. I thought it was over because I didn't understand anything about what we had been dealing with. The murder started again, and I had to follow. I owed it to my fallen friends, you see. I quit the force. My parents had left me a great deal of money, fortunately, so I was able to stay on the case full time for over 30 years now. So was it guilt that put you on this quest for, for vengeance? It's not about vengeance. It's about what's right. This thing is not natural. It shouldn't exist. People are dying because of it. Somebody has to stop it. Okay. That's all I need to know. I'll get back to work. Good. Are you finished? Yeah, I'm all finished. Here's your book back. Thanks. So, do you think you know where he's signing? I think I might have put all the information in the computer, and I think he's somewhere near Lincoln Park. We don't have much time. We still have much to do before darkness. Isn't it time we see how good you are with these knives? Okay. So were they out of Rambo knives? Actually, they were out of Rambo knives, but I wanted that one anyways. Well, let's go in the back. You can show me what you can do. Okay. You know, I haven't done this for a while. We'll see how it goes. Ha! Oops. Let's try that again, shall we? All right, kid. There's one problem, though. These aren't silver. They won't do any damage to a werewolf. This is a soldering gun. Do you know how to use it? Yeah. Good. This is silver solder. Put a very thin layer on all of your knives. Okay. I'm glad you can use a knife. Unlike the movies, a werewolf is extremely fast, and silver bullets aren't practical because they're too expensive. I use this. You need to be very careful how much of this I put on. If I put on too much, I'll throw the balance of the knives off. When you're done with that, we'll go over plans for tonight. At some point, you looked in the mirror and went, yeah, I'll go with this. Yeah, I sure did. So your computer model places the exact center of the activity right around here? Yeah, it puts it on, on this street. But here's the question, how does a werewolf get money to buy a house anyways? Murder a bunch of rich people. He does that? Animal instincts are mostly about survival. He survived over 30 years on his own. So what's your plan for tonight? We're going to put your computer model to the test. We're going to keep a vigil right here and see what we see. If we can find him, then we'll track him and hopefully find where he's staying. And then we'll go at him in the daylight. 
even though we can still change, we will have an advantage. Okay, so you want to head down to the end of the street? Come on. excited as the job description made it out to me. It's all part of the deal, kid. You know what? You stop calling me kid whenever you're ready. I'm not ready. You got something against people younger than you? Nope. I got something against helping a kid die. Is there something in your past you want to talk about? There's not much to tell, really. There was a kid, a little younger than you. His name was Seth. His folks were murdered. Same as yours. He wanted revenge, I guess. He begged me to let him tag along and hunt down his parents' killers. It was against my better judgment, but I let him. He died. Or worse. That explains a few things, but I'm not gonna die. Really? Well, you're pretty sure of yourself. I am. I don't know why. But yeah, I am. Can't argue with a confident man. <laughs> TK, TK. Angus, looks like we have company. Where? Right over there past those kids playing basketball. Oh yeah, I got it. Those kids are in serious trouble. What should we do? Uh, you've got to get those kids out of there. How? I'll go, go distract them. Just, just get them out of that area. Okay, but what are you going to do? I'm going to kill it. Hold on. Aren't you guys aware of all the murders in the area? What are you talking about, Commando Joe? <laughs> There's been seven murders there in the last three weeks. Maybe I'll just go ahead and call it a night. Why don't you mind your own business, Rambo? <laughs> <laughs> you guys really want to die that bad, you're welcome to. But you really should go on home. What we do is our business, so why don't you move it along? What she said. Jeez, where are you kids from, hell? So what are you dressed up for? Halloween! <laughs> <laughs> oh look, it's double mint douchebags. So are we supposed to be afraid of the boogeyman? <laughs> the boogeyman. <laughs> Don't you guys go and press your head in dough and make jackass cookies? Let me guess, you're not only the president of Hair Club for Men, you're also a client. <laughs> <laughs> Buffy the Bald Man Slayer? <laughs> Goodness, maybe your parents don't want you back.
thought we already had this discussion. So you expect me to go against this werewolf unarmed? You can't walk around with knives all over yourself. Take them off. So you want me to go up there with nothing? Remember what I said about you being the bait? You sadistic son of a... I'll do it. Just know I'm really against this idea. Crying out loud. I'm taking this one with me, by the way. My mom gave me this one, so you hold on to it for me. Here. I've only gotten this close three times in the last 30 years. Make no mistake, this is as dangerous as it gets. Understood. I'm going around back. You go to the front door, knock. If he answers, tell him you're from the neighborhood watch program. So you want me to warn him about all the deaths we're having in the area? You tell him that you're going around the neighborhood uh, informing people about safety concerns. He'll probably blow you off. He might let you in, thinking you're an easy kill. So I really am the bait? I guess you'll be breaking in from the back door at the same time? Hopefully we can catch him between us on alerts. Yeah, I sure hope so. So, um, does this guy have a name? His name's Alan Nielsen. Can I help you? Good evening, sir. I'm Jim Smith with the Neighborhood Watch Program. Just stopping by talking about some of the crime in the area. Is that okay? Do you have a few minutes? And what type of safety issues? Well, the gang violence has really increased in the area. And that includes crimes, drugs, alcohol. We're just trying to give some safety pointers to the neighbors in the area. Yes, I agree. Would you like to come in for a few minutes? Sure, that'd be great. Wow, I sure have a lot of stuff. It's a furnished rental. Angus, I know you're in here. Come out and join the party. Ah, there you are. How's the leg? Oh, you did some damage, to be sure. But it's doing pretty well. Good, good. Where are my manners? Have a seat. Your hospitality is excellent, as always. Still keeping your sword with you, I see. I find it's always good to be prepared. Don't you? Naturally. You know, you make me feel tired all over when I look at you. Really? And why is that? Well, you've been trailing me for what? 34 years now? Mm -hmm. Give or take. You sacrificed your career, your loved ones, your friends. Ever been married? Can't say that I have. All this personal sacrifice. For what? You kill people. It needs to stop. So do sharks. Are you trying to stop them too? You're also unnatural. How so? How so? Well, there is that whole wolf thing. I mean, what makes me unnatural? Do you even know how I became this way? I do not. I was just a kid, 17, 18 years old. 
crossing the field when I was attacked. Hell, they looked like collies to me. I didn't know what they were. Their bite made me what I am. It wasn't junk food, nuclear fallout, science. It came from animals. How does that make me unnatural? I really don't feel like getting into a debate. You're a murderer, and you have to be stopped. Oh, Angus, you're a one-track mind type of guy. This is getting us nowhere. Angus, Angus, have you not been aware that I've always known about you? Even after that first meeting, I was involved in that second venture. I knew about you. Hell, I've had to go out of my way to make sure you didn't lose my trail. And why would you have gone to all that trouble? Because it's entertaining. Because you wasted your life chasing me. And now the time has come for this to end. I will miss it. I might as well. Tell me one thing. In all these years, you've always kept moving. You bite a guy here, a woman there. Why have you stopped now? Why here? Because of you, Angus, you've never had a family, and neither have I. So when I got here to Salt Lake, I mean, come on, the family capital of the world, I want to start a family as much as the next guy. People like me. Uh, that explains it. You weren't trying to kill them. You were trying to infect them with werewolfism. That's right. You kept finding them and killing them with your silver sword. So Angus, I did not kill them. You killed them. How are you going to pay for their murders? I saved them from the torment you would have brought on them. How will I pay? By killing you. Your time has come, old man. Can't let him get out of the house. Heard that? It is your time, and not mine, that it's come. How badly are you hurt? It's not that bad. Is it over? Yeah. You know, it is over. I've been studying these things for years. I never thought I'd actually see any of this stuff. Well, that is their greatest strength. No one really believes they really exist. This is the last of it. So now that the werewolf is dead and gone, what else can we get involved in? Kelly? I've been chasing a werewolf for over 33 years. You don't think in all that time that's the only supernatural creature I've come across, do you? So there is more of them out there, huh? Good. So what are we going after next? How do you feel about 
vampires. Come on, Kelly. We've got work to do. <laughs> <laughs>